What is going on guys? In this video, we're going to go over fourware. So I have a couple synths here, including the actual synth that Deadmau5 used. Um, a friend told me that you could find it in a stream somewhere. So I have my version of it. And then I kind of made a progression with his version and then ended up using my version of it as the supporting synth. So I will play what I have. I just created my own little drum loop here. Um, so this is what it sounds like. Okay, so that is pretty much it. Um, as far as the MIDI goes, I'm working on a MIDI dead mouse pack. So I think all of this will be in there. Essentially, what I can do first is show you the sound that I created um, before I knew how he actually did it. So my thinking with this was that his sound had a very square-like quality to it, but then it also modulated into a sound that sounded more like a saw wave. So my thinking was to create a wavetable that went from saw to square, and I could automate the wavetable position, and then have a standard pluck filter on it. And then there's definitely some crispiness to his sound. And I thought it was some distortion. So I used some distortion on here. And then to try and recreate the randomness of his sounds, how they kind of bounce in the left and right, and some are brighter, others are not as bright. What I did is I threw this note on random on the filter frequency. So some notes would randomly be brighter than others. I put it on the drive. So some notes would be like more distorted than others. And I also put it on the pan. So some notes would be in the left and right and just be bouncing around. So we can go through that real quick. Um, I will take off the processing. So I have this saw that turns into a square. Um, so I just pulled the saw up. I added another wavetable here and then I drew in a square. And then I went to morph crossfade. So that allows us to go from a saw to a square. So with just the saw and 
some detune, like five voices. It sounds like this. So we have the saw going into a square and you can hear how it's bouncing around in the left and right. The next thing I did, I threw this envelope two on the cutoff. So we're getting that pluck sound. And then for the distortion, just to crispen up the attacks of those plucks. So this one gets like a very good weight, kind of like a guitar distortion sound onto it. I threw some compression on there to soften the attack, so very quick attack. Um, the next thing after that, some reverb. And with this one, what I did is I turned the high cut and the damp very low. So we're getting this huge splash of high frequency reverb and I'm using the plate setting. So I had this utility on here as well, which was just automating the gain. Didn't do any EQ work on this, but I threw a limiter on there to control those peaks. And then the final thing is just some delay on the four setting, and I pushed it forward a little bit. Essentially the same sound. The only thing that was different is that instead of using the distortion only, which is what Dead Mouse used to create that square sound, I actually use a square wave. So to move on to how he did it, he did it a much simpler way, of course. So he used this analog BD sign, and I think he found a position in the wavetable. He might have automated this a little bit as well. But one of the cool things is he put it up to 16 voices and the detune all the way down. And that's how he got the notes to be bouncing around the left and the right. Because there's all these voices and some of them, just the way Serum does it, are left and right. So some of the notes are randomly going to the left and the right. So that sounds like this. So very sine wavy sound, it's pretty dull and dead, but the thing that is cool when you put some distortion on it is you essentially turn it into a square wave. Pretty cool thing he did distorting it so it turns more into a square wave, so it's getting some brightness. And again, with those 16 voices, you're getting some random hits in distortion that are a little bit louder. The next thing he did is threw a delay on it. The 1 8 and 1 8 is the same as the 4 setting on Ableton's delay. He pushed the left a little bit down and the right a little bit up. <laughs> And then finally, he threw a big reverb on it, high cut and damp all the way down, uh, plate reverb size up, mix up a touch, and that just gives it this huge space and width all the way up. So that is the real patch, and I just did a touch of EQ to fit it in with what I had. And essentially, the only other thing was the bass. So for that, it's a pretty simple sound. I just used a saw wave. 
with some voices. And it's pretty much the same as the supporting synth block. I just have this envelope two on the filter, resonance down, drive down, doing some asymmetry distortion, compression to control it a little bit, and then some reverb that's pretty open as well. It's going into the limiter, and then I have some delays on this too. So throughout the progression, what I did is I used the synth that I made as a supporting synth. So I actually turned it an octave down because it sounded like in his track, when the beat comes in, there's a second synth that's layered in with that main pluck sound and it just beefens it up, gives it more of a saw feel. It helps to have the melody roll along a little smoother, I think. Um, we can go over this chime sound as well. Which, I love sounds like these, just reminds me of like Porter Worlds era stuff. Um, so I will take off the processing. So essentially what I did is I took this envelope one f down first to create that pluck sound. And what I was doing is trying to find wavetables that have all these little ups and downs, these squiggly marks here, because the more of these small ones that you have, the more high frequency content you're going to get because these are higher frequencies. So I want something that was a little buzzy. I ended up using some Foley wavetables, but if you find anything that has kind of like a noise wavetable sound, it works. Um, Detuned it, five voices, and I was using this envelope too to kind of get some different sounds with this wavetable position. This helps to kind of get more variation in the high frequencies. At the very start of the note, we're getting a different quality and then it, it changes. So that helps when there's effects after it to give it more of a bell or chime feel. Uh, I layered another oscillator. This one's an octave up. So that's kind of like the chime top, those very nice top frequencies. Next thing I did, same thing as the other Plex, I have this envelope 2 on the cutoff. So we're getting more of that impact sounds, more like a, a chime or a bell. Some asymmetry to give it some brightness. Some compression just to tame the attacks a little bit because with this distortion it gets pretty heavy. And then another really open plate reverb. So that reverb just gives it this huge chime feel. Um, and it's helpful to remember that whatever you feed into the reverb is what creates the reverb quality. So to get that very shimmery reverb, we need those high frequencies, which is why I wanted wavetables like this. And then I just threw an EQ on here to take out some of the low frequencies that distortion created. And then just a touch of limiting to soften the peaks of each of those. not doing much, might be doing more on these higher notes. 
just when there's a lot of notes very quickly, it kind of helps to tame some of that. But essentially that is it. Um, for the pad sounds, what I did is I took the melody, turned it into chords. What I did here is, again, I'm trying to find the right character with some wavetables. So turning off this band pass. So this wavetable gives us like some real meat, some real frequencies to give it a foundation. And then again, this very squiggly wavetable helps us to get some higher frequencies. The second thing on this is this noise oscillator. And I have this LFO one affecting the pan and the level a little bit. Uh, it sounded like in Dead Mouse's track, the pad was going like from the right to the left and it was this very airy thing. It was more of like a noise pad. So combine that with our wavetables. And then I sent the oscillators into the span pass filter. So we're just getting those mid frequencies, but the noise filter is free of this. So we're still able to get some higher noise. Almost sounds like waves kind of crashing slowly. And then I was just doing some more EQ work to kind of get the frequencies I needed. So that is essentially it for this. Um, I was just playing around with some other sounds and like another alternate to this chime, just playing around. Um, but if you'd like to play around with it yourself, it is up on the Patreon right now. But I hope this was helpful for you guys. It's always interesting to look into how Dead Mouse actually does things and how simple he's able to make it. But it sounds just like so good. Um, so I'll play from this little break section into this section of me just playing around. Um, but thank you guys for watching, I'm working on some other stuff, some start to finish courses. So I will see you in the next video.